In this video, we're going to be solving a question that's related to binomial expansion. This is an ad math video. I realized I haven't made an ad math video in a very long time. So I decided that uh, instead of explaining the topics from scratch, I'm going to solve past paper questions. And while solving these past paper questions, I'm going to explain the concepts in the background. So this is from May, June 2020, paper one, variant two. So here, here's a question which says, find the first three terms in the expansion of four minus X upon 16 to the power six in ascending powers of X, give each term in its simplest form. All right, now, so as you know, the formula that we use for binomial expansion goes as follows. N C R A raised to the power N minus R, B raised to the power of R, put a bracket here. Yeah, and what you, you may be wondering what's A, B and R and n so basically this is applied when you have two terms and with the plus or a minus sign in between and the entire expression is raised to the power of n so we start with r as zero and then we gradually take it up and depending on the number of terms that we want for example if you want the first three terms so that means r is going to be zero one and two okay and if you want to expand all uh, if you want to if you want to have the entire expression so you're going to start from zero and gonna take it all the way up to n, which in this case happens to be six. But as the question mentions that you just want the first three terms, all right? So we're just gonna stop when we have the first three terms. Okay, so now here's here's how we're gonna start. n you can see is six, a you can see is four, and b you can see is minus x upon 16. So here's how I'm gonna start. So I'm gonna start with six, c zero, four raised to the power six minus zero, so I can just write six, okay? And then b, which happens to be minus x upon 16, you've got to take the sign into consideration also, to the power of zero. So this will give me the first term, okay? I'll figure, I'll figure out what this is equal to in the next step, but let's write down uh, the second and the third term. So 6c1, oops, sorry about that. Yeah, 6c1, 4 raised to the power, 6 minus 1 is 5. And then we have minus x upon 16 to the power of 1. Okay, equals to, well, we'll find out what that is. And then for the third term, 6c2, 4 raised to the power 6 minus 2, which is 4, and then minus x upon 16 to the power 2. All right, now pick up your calculators. Let's switch to another color. 6c0, if you know what 6c0 is, it's equal to 1. Okay, so this becomes 1 into 4 to the power 6. So 4 to the power 6 is 4096 into one again why because this entire expression when raised to the power of zero will become one and then you have 6c1 which is six you can use your calculator to work it out into four to the power five that i need to work out which is one zero two four into minus now remember uh, you have to take the sign into consideration also and so into minus x upon 16. so let's work this out six into one zero two four into minus x well i can't do that in my calculator so let's work this out and then let's divide it by 16. so the overall value remember is going to be negative so we have minus 384 along with x okay so here now i always suggest my students to first realize what the overall value the sign of the overall value is going to be so over here it's going to be positive why because although you have a negative expression but it's raised to an even power it's whole squared so that means the overall answer is going to be positive so 6c2 that's something we need to work out 6c2 is 15 15 times 4 to the power 4 which is 64 no sorry it's 256 so 256 multiplied by x squared upon 16 16 squared is 256 so 256 and 256 get cancelled out and you're simply left with 15x squared. Now let's write all of this nicely. So the first term is 4096 and I'm going to write them uh, here. It's, it's, I find it neater to find the terms vertically and then when I'm writing the final answer, I'll write it horizontally. So this becomes 4096 minus 384x plus 15x squared, which is the correct answer. Okay, so that's that. All right, now this is where it gets interesting. It says, hence find the term independent of x. Independent of x basically means that you're looking for what? You're looking for the constant, okay? So when you're expanding a binomial expression, so you're likely to have a constant also, which means it has no x whatsoever. So here you're not just expanding uh, an expression, you're multiplying it with a certain expression also. And after all that has happened, you want the term that is independent of x. Okay, so this, We've already expanded and we have the first three terms. So I'm gonna write that instead. And they are 4096 minus 384x plus 15x squared, okay? And this is being multiplied by x minus one upon x, the whole thing squared. Okay, now this I need to expand, but I'm not gonna use binomial. Instead, I'm gonna use uh, the identity, which is a minus b, the whole thing squared. 
so this becomes a square minus 2 into a into b plus b square so this becomes x square this and this gets cancelled out so minus 2 plus 1 upon x square so now I'm going to write down the expanded version, which is x square minus 2 plus 1 upon x square. Now, at this point, it's not recommended that you multiply every term that is, all right? You be smart over here, okay? And what do I mean by being smart? Here's what I mean. What I mean is that you only multiply the terms that you feel are going to give you the constant, okay? Now, I'll tell you what I mean. 4096 over here is a constant, right? It has no x with it. So what should I multiply it with in order to obtain a term that also ends up as a constant? So the answer to that is minus 2. So let's work out what 4096 minus times minus 2 is. So that gives me minus 8192. Okay, now, there was an x here, which I forgot to write. Okay, so minus 384x, all right? So what do I need to multiply this with? There's nothing I can multiply this with because one way or the other, I am gonna end up with a term that has x in it. However, however, if I multiply this right here, which is what, which is 15x squared. If I multiply 15x squared with one upon x squared, then the x squared in the numerator and the x squared in the denominator will just take care of each other. So here's what I end up with over here. So right now I get, let's see, I get 15, x square upon x square so x square and x square gets cancelled out and let's see what do we have we have minus 8192 plus 15 let's see what is that so minus 8192 plus 15 gives me minus 8177 and this right here is the final answer so this is what you got to do when you're asked to find out the term that's independent of x or perhaps the coefficient of x you got to see what terms should be multiplied in order to obtain what is required. So that's all for this video. I hope this concept, this entire question, in fact, is clear to all of you. In case it's not, let me know in the comment section. Let me know what other ad math questions you want me to solve. Uh, I'll post them up on my channel or you can reach out to me on Instagram. So that's all. See you guys in the next one. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.